the Board of Health meeting on May the 15th, 2018. Who would like a packet? I have one, thank you. Uh, I see it. That's good. Would you guys have a packet? Uh, at the top of our agenda, we do have some open time for public discussion, and I believe we do have some members of the public that would like to address the board. Uh, okay. Well, we're here primarily to, to make a few comments on the pesticide, uh, those pesticide regulations and to hear your update, but then we do have to. Mary Ellen O'Neill. Okay. Yeah, Excuse me, could you sure. say your name for the record? Oh, Mary Ellen O'Neill. Thank you. you time, time your lead correctly, because it's, you know, icy. Right, right. Icy. <laughs> 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 um, and I'm Gina Snyder, and I'm the support the pesticide regulations and um, have a few comments. No, okay. Very good. I had just um, heard that there was a uh, that there may be a change, and we have, you know, I know the Board of Health has been considering these, although the, the membership of the committee has, of the board has changed, um, but it has been under consideration for at least a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And the intent was mm -hmm. to, um, primarily to use these to educate people, but to get the pesticides off the public space of the sidewalk and the tree lawn that many, you know, pedestrians and uh, of all ages from young to old, and their pets use. And I'm, I'm strongly urging the Board of Health to recommend to the Board of Selectmen the original draft of, of the pesticide regulations that has been keeping them off sidewalks and the um, I don't, I don't foresee, foresee us going out and feeding people with <laughs> pet disease, but it's, it's a step in educating people, you know, so down the road, hopefully, there will be less on people's private lawns and, you know, a consideration of alternatives, and there are those alternatives. Thank you. No, thank you. Just to be clear, it's pesticides and herbicides. Right. Is uh, herbicide included? It's in included in, in, in pesticide. Right. That's uh, included in that term, yes. And I view it as a multiple safety issue. You know, there's a lot of people with pets, myself included, who will end up walking in the street. Which is dangerous because you can see the pesticides on the sidewalks and the dog lets them off their paws. So that's really bad. We see a lot more. I'll tell you, it's amazing the number of people with baby carriages walking around um, ready nowadays. It's wonderful to see. But you know, you do not want to be running a baby carriage down the sidewalk through those little pellets of pesticides. So it's, it's very unhealthy for babies. So I think it's, it's very much needed to tell people, do not put this on the tree lawn and the sidewalk. And maybe educate them by, about their own children. I mean, if you've got kids, I don't know why you would put this on your yard. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, we do tend to have a little bit of that discussion of the pesticides. I did just have a little bit of an uh, update on some uh, Board of Health matters that, let's see, that we've been working on ourselves. Uh, the, the first thing I would like to do would be introduce a letter from Brad Jones. As you're probably aware, we have been working with legislators to try to get the uh, tobacco legislation passed. It has had several several bouts with uh, House bills, Senate bills, uh, mixed committee bills, uh, and it's finally, it looks as though the House bill has passed uh, as Representative Jones says, there were civil, several pieces of legislation filed this session on the topic, the most prominent of which was House Bill 2864. After a public hearing last year and review by the Joint Committee on Public Health, the bill was redrafted along with several other bills released as House 4109. The Health Care Finance Committee approved that bill and referred it to the House Ways and Means, which uh, redrafted and released the bill as House 4479. On this past Wednesday, uh, the House debated and passed the legislation. Two amendments were adopted, one technical and the other an amendment I offered to create a task force to look further at the ongoing issue of vaping, jeweling, and various related issues, which we've had discussions here about. Uh, the bill as amended was passed on a vote of 147 to 4. I was pleased to vote in favor of the legislation, which is now before the Senate as House Bill 
4486. I do expect the Senate will follow suit in passing similar legislation. And then he goes on to thank us for our advocacy for the issue. Does that bill cover just possession or the possession and use or both? Uh, well, this is tobacco. So this is basically would be increase the age across the state from 18 to 21. To purchase or to use? Or to, to, to purchase. Okay. It doesn't write about use. Uh, well, no, but yeah, to purchase, yes. And it also would limit the, uh, the current one, I believe, limits, and, and this has been changed now a couple times, but the other one, the, the newest one, did uh, restrict sales from pharmacies. They did not allow pharmacies. It did not, as far as I can tell, have any restriction to flavored tobacco or where that could be sold, but basically to raise the age and raise the places that can be sold. So that is a that is a start. That would be good, and we'll see what the Senate. I, I'm not sure when the Senate will be taking this up. Uh, I probably should get in touch with uh, Senator Lewis uh, to find that out. But I have not done that yet. I just got this yesterday. One new notice from the May fourth. Centers for Disease Control report uh, shows an increase of illness from mosquitoes, ticks, and flea bites. Uh, the report states that from the years 2004 to 2016, tick-borne diseases have more than doubled. Uh, so getting into that season, we should all be very aware of, of ticks and what the problems that they can cause. Uh, now, is, that, is that locally? Uh, that was across the country nationally, okay. that figure okay. more than doubled in the last 13 years. Uh, but Lyme disease did account for 82% of the tick-borne illnesses. So Lyme disease is a problem. And it did go on to uh, show ways that we could uh, limit our exposure to ticks, which uh, the CDC website is pretty good about that. They, there are a lot of measures that we can do mostly wearing long sleeves and pants and using uh, repellents uh, would, be, would be wonderful. There was a good, last year we had a, didn't we have a presentation on the ticks, which was excellent. Excellent, yeah. And one other thing I did, uh, since I, let's, we can get into the pesticide because I did get a communication from Nancy, Nancy Doctor who asked if I could read her letter into the, uh, into the record. May 15th, uh, the history of the current pesticide regulations go back to 2015, when concerned running citizens approached the Board of Health asking for regulations to restrict the use of pesticide application on public land, specifically the tree lawns and sidewalks. This was based on scientific evidence to direct harm to humans and animals from pesticide use. The work on these current Board of Health regulations go back to early 2016, and include hours of research, outreach, other communities, uh, public health departments, and Reading's town council. The regulations were written in cooperation with the Reading Public Works Department and strongly supported by the DPW. The current proposal was written using both Marblehead and Wellesley pesticide regulations as templates, which have been in effect for years without incident or def difficulty with implementation. In addition to the copious scientific and medical studies showing the risk of pesticide use to human health, pets, and the environment previously shared with the board, I have included for the current members some of the studies that spilled over into the general press, in particular the Boston Globe. The risk and harm associated with pesticide use is now considered general widespread knowledge. I am confident along with our local legislators that restricting pesticides on public land is no different from any other environmental and neighbor stewardship law and regulation, including restrictions on littering, recycling, noise, picking up after pets, and smoking. These local regulations all act on values associated with the community where contaminant-free air, water, and land are shared resources. I am confident that the next step the Board of Health will take is to pre present the pesticide regulations as written approved by town council and presented in a public hearing last year to the select board at the soonest possible chance, Nancy Dr. Pearl Street. And she did pass along just a, a recent, actually last year's uh, Boston Globe article where 
the state, many states, Massachusetts, which is one of them, uh, sue over, sue, file suit over an EPA decision to keep pesticides on the market. Uh, I could pass this around for. Thank you for your last meetings for your comments. Yeah. Uh, just because it kind of made me <clears throat> look at it a little bit different and try to go and try to find out where I actually thought about the whole issue. And I did I did uh, quite a bit of research and pulled out a few abstracts from the uh, from the scientific literature, and it and it kind of did convince me a little bit more of where I why where and why I stood on the on the issue. I didn't really, I haven't really made a, a copy of these, but just from the uh, Journal of Environmental Toxicology, uh, let's see, International Environment, and the pedi a pediatrics journal, just from four, four abstracts that I pulled out. Uh, they all kind of uh, have the same opinion. Uh, I, Causality is kind of difficult when you when you're trying to cause when you show right, and that's what we had said the last time, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, and no one wants to be in a control group of a double-blind study where you've got the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know, to show like, well, these people, a lot higher people, and got sick with this, but not this. Sure. Uh, you don't want to be in that control group. But a lot of studies, uh, associations over the past. A few decades have shown some pretty uh, striking results of when something has been used, the results from it. Uh, back in the 50s, there was the, the DES babies, the diethyl silvesterol, where they gave women a drug oh, to. Thalidomide? Well, thalidomide was even was a little bit later than that, but the diethyl silvesterol was what they gave women to uh, prevent miscarriage. And this was back, and it was then stopped pretty much in the 60s. And after they did, they not only did it not work, but a lot of the children, the study showed that the children from those mothers had medical issues, mostly like reproductive issues. Mm -hmm. And they never, they, obviously they didn't test it, but the results kind of showed that. Same thing with thalidomide. Uh, they never really did testing on thalidomide as far as, well, they did some testing, but it was shown to be kind of safe. And the results, as we, as we kind of know the results of what happened. Uh, and even more recently, just in the case of uh, sudden infant death syndrome, when I think pedi pediatricians back in the early 90s said, OK, well, we shouldn't uh, place our child to sleep on their stomach. And people started doing that. And within 10 years, the, I don't know the exact number, but I think the the rate of SIDS dropped close to half over the 10 years that people stopped putting their child on their, on their stomach. Uh, I guess my point is, is all, uh, a lot of this is not cause, causal. You can't really show that it causes that, but right. over the course of time, you see the wisdom of doing something. Uh, and that's basically what all of these reports that I, that I looked up to uh, state. Uh, the causality is not really a definite thing, uh, but they all, like for, for instance, the review supports uh, relationships between child health and air quality, lead, pesticides, water contaminants. To adequately address such priorities, governments and agency, agencies must strengthen environmental health research capacities and adopt policies to reduce parental and childhood exposures to proven and emerging environmental threats. Uh, that, that's basically the whole, that's, uh, I can pass these around too. I, I just highlighted a little bit of the, uh, there's sufficient epidemiology, epidemiological evidence for causal relationships between several adverse pregnancy or child health outcomes 
and prenatal or childhood exposure to environmental chemical contaminants. Uh, basically, and then it goes on to very similar to what this uh, says, where relationships between child health and environmental exposures are supported by sufficient evidence of causal relationships, there is a need for policies and programs to minimize population exposure. And I, I think that's basically what I think our regulations do. You're just making a reasonable effort to expose, to prevent <coughs> exposure to uh, people of, the, of a potentially toxic chemical. Sure. Yeah, and, and my point, you know, John, in this whole thing, I think you, you know that was that anytime you have a policy board in town, the first thing that policy board should ask before implementing anything is what, what's going to be the causation here? What, what, what effect are we going to have by implementing this? And if it's a great effect, then that's a great reason to implement something, right? And if it's not, if it's negligible or, or, or no effect, then you have to really question, do we want to implement it? And that's really all I was asking. So if we're talking about a small piece of um, prop, uh, people's prop, I should say town's property that, um, on public ways. And my question was, is there, is there going to be some effect? Can we point to something that says, yes, if you do implement this, this is going to decrease by X. I mean, right. Even yeah. if it's it, it's not a, a huge amount, and so that's really all my inquiry was to say mm -hmm. before we put a policy in place, let's make sure this policy is going to actually have some positive effect, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's that's really kind of my position from the last meeting. Right. So, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. Um, you know, so you, this is. Um, I, I see your point though, where with the, the the SIDS is an interesting thing where we know now yeah, that doesn't cause. Uh, it's not the causation of just having a baby on their stomach, but it did have a positive effect. It decreased mm -hmm. um, over that over that period of time through awareness. So that's actually an interesting uh, point in case. Uh, I mean, the truth is we really don't know if we're going to save any lives by doing this. Uh, but it's a, it's a reasonable, I, I believe it's a reasonable step to take. And that's basically what we do is we make reasonable regulations that will protect the health of the citizens. Sure. And, and I needed, you know, my thing is I, I try to wrap my head around the best I can. I, the, the one question I have, maybe you can answer this, is um, why, what is, where is the state's threshold? Why is this, I can't wrap my head around why the state allows companies to even go out and use these pesticides if they're so harmful. That's a, that's a tough thing to wrap my head around. Oops. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Can I, can I actually speak to that? Sure. The sorry. pesticide. You just have to uh, state your name. My name is David Panett. I live at 22 Colonial Drive. The reason why I came this evening is actually in response to a, a letter to the editor that actually was written by Nancy Doctor, who you uh, read her letter into uh, evidence here. And the reason why I came tonight was because of some of the things that were written. Um, uh, basically, I think what she did is she poked Kevin Sexton in the eye in regard to what he said about pesticides and brought into her, her letter to the editor um, things about Agent Orange and Gulf War Syndrome. Now, for, for someone to say something like that, I have to be honest with you, I had friends growing up and relatives that came back from Vietnam that suffered in silence, some of them in screaming agony over Agent Orange. And, and when I asked Mr. Sexton about this, he said it was about pesticides and, and herbicides that were on public lands. To go from pesticides and herbicides on public lands to Agent Orange is a huge leap. It's like going from a slingshot to a 10-inch howitzer. And also to, to bring in Gulf War Syndrome, I have a brother that went to the, the Middle East. He went to the Gulf War. He has Gulf War Syndrome. When you're talking about something, about spraying a, a, an insecticide or a pesticide or an herbicide on a public grass strip or other grass strips, they're two totally different paradigms. And to your point, John, when you're talking about thalidomide, I think it's dangerous to actually bring thalidomide and pesticide in the same, in the same voice. But to get to my point, up until a few years ago, I carried a, a, a commercial certification in pesticide in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts from the Department of Food and Agriculture. Pesticides are one of the most highly regulated industries in the entire country, if not the entire world. In order for a pesticide to actually be labeled and allowed to be utilized even by licensed applicators, it has to go through stringent tested, testing in order for that to actually happen. And in order to apply it, you have to apply it at such minuscule 
rates of concentration that they have something that's called LD50, which means it's a lethal, lethal dose 50. So that when a pesticide is actually mixed at that concentration, it only affects 50% of those insects that, it, that it's targeted for. So even if you directly apply it to those pet insects, only 50% of those, those insects will actually die. So it's mi mixed at a very, very minuscule amount. Anyone that is actually applying pesticides uh, or herbicides on any public property has to be licensed by the Department of Food and Agriculture in the, the state of Massachusetts. If they're doing so without a license, they're doing so illegally. So um, I think you have to t take the pesticides. I'm not saying that, in, in, and to Nancy's point, yes, pesticides are dangerous. They are dangerous when they're uh, applied improperly. Uh, if you take something, I will just very simply, it's a simple statement to everyone that's here that can understand it. Diatomaceous earth is, a, is actually a labeled pesticide. Diatomaceous earth is nothing but, but ground up clay. It's what every, uh, most pool filters use to filter the water. That is actually used as a pesticide. What it does is it desiccates the exoskeleton of an, of an insect, dries them out, and kills them. If you take a handful of diatomaceous earth and you snog that in your, in, your, in, your, in your nose and in your mouth, that is dangerous. It would cause silicosis in your lungs, and you can die from that. So really, you have to take what the application rate is, the pesticide or herbicide that's being used, is it you being used properly? Is it being used in safe concentration? Is it used, being used in legal concentration? And it, is it being applied to either the target pest or the target weed or herb that's being applied to control? So it's, I'm not saying that all pesticides are safe. I'm not saying all pesticides are unsafe. They all have the potential to be unsafe. It's how you use them and how you control them. So you really have to, to have to talk to what the control measures are, what the benefit is, and what the downside is, the potential downside, <clears throat> if, if it's applied illegally and improperly to the, the surface it's being applied to. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Could I add to that? Uh, sure, I was just going to mention as you and to, to the first question was uh, pesticides in order to be sold used as directed are classified as safe right uh, if they're used on, on as directed but again it, people may not use as directed and, and for sure you could ask the question do we want that on public land I agree yes, with what you just said thank you um, I wouldn't want anybody to misunderstand and think that if you're not a licensed applicator, it's illegal to apply pesticides because part of the problem is that homeowners are applying them and they're not licensed applicators and they are applying them improperly because you are not supposed to put them on pavement. That's not where they're supposed to be active. And that's, that's actually where not true. The problem is. Diatomaceous earth is not clay, it's actually little diatoms, it's a silicon um, critter tiny little um, silicate. Um, and it's actually listed in 40 CFR 152, which your regulations indicate mm -hmm. it's not um, prohibited under FIFRA. It's not, mm -hmm. it's one of the ones it's not. So I just wanted to clarify that as well. And, and I, I think that's, again, that's what our reg regulations want to address is, I mean, we're not, mentioning anything about anybody on their own private land, what you, they can do whatever they would like. Hopefully, you know, we would encourage them not to use pesticides, but that, that's, not, that's beyond our purview. We're looking strictly at public land. That's, that's it. <clears throat> John, can you do, do me a favor? Can you point to, I was trying to look up where, where, where um, the exemptions are for property that does not have sidewalks. Did we mention? I don't we talk think that's. That? I don't even think that's in the regulations. No, that's not in the regulations. 
Okay. Didn't we talk about that last? Uh, the last well, we, we talked about how far the public land went. Right. But that's, to be honest, we it we're varies. just yeah. it may vary. That's why we restricted it basically to sidewalk and tree line because that is off away from the person's property. There's no real that that would be the delineation would be the sidewalk. So we're saying sidewalk and tree lawn only. And it, or I should say not only, but in regards to... Uh, well, it, it does. The regulations specifically say the town-owned land that these regulations pertain to are sidewalks and tree lawns. It's in the regulations. Okay. I, I, all right. I found it right here. So we're not excluding it, but we're saying it that way. In terms of enforceability, I think um, given we don't have the meets and bounds of every property and the possession of people doing the spring, we might have to have some time where there's no sidewalk an agreed upon number of feet from the edge of the street. That would be the limit. Mm -hmm. I, I can't think of another way to do it. Uh, uh, that, that's one possibility. That it is, uh, although we, we didn't even get that far. Yeah, I mean, that's something we can yep. right over. Yep. Probably more something. Mm -hmm. Yep, I mean, that would, would, be, be, would be the ones. That, that would be town, according to town council, that would be your purview, because that is right. town land. Uh, so that's, that's one issue. That's one potential mm -hmm. solution. Mm -hmm. So we, I was hoping, I, I mean, I'd love to be unanimous in this uh, support from the board to, to present this to the Board of Selectmen. I'm hoping that, you know, Kevin, that you would be, uh, you know, willing to uh, support the regulations. I know Heidi's not, Heidi can't make it tonight. Right. Uh, I know we talked a little bit as well about the, um, the dollar amounts here. I would like to see those those changed. I think a, a first offense is a harsh offense to jump right to a, uh, a denomination. Yes, in respect that this is more of a warning and informational thing, I I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, that, that was one of the ones that we talked about as well last week. That seemed, that seemed to rise a little fast. I think the object of this is to, <coughs> to alert people that that's not appropriate behavior if to, to spread uh, pesticides on town land. Uh, and if they happen to it, it may be a mistake or whatever, but to let them know that, that, that that's not appropriate, uh, give, to give them a warning. Uh, I think that's, perfect, that's perfectly acceptable to me. And after that, it, it, it would be reported to the health department. If, if somebody did report something, it would be reported to the health department. And Laura, if whatever, could at some point investigate or send, send someone to investigate to find out what, what actually happened, what transpired. Uh, was, was the town land uh, contaminated with pesticide? And then take it from there. How would that determination be made? That that I would say happen? just by sight, just by sight. I mean, I, I don't think we would have to test. Uh, I suppose <laughs> you would. You may have to prove it to actually uh, have a have a fine or a, uh, enforcement that 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 was actually a, a pesticide pellet. I mean, it could be a lime pellet. It could be one of a lot of different things. But sure. Well, it could be coming out of squeeze bottles too. Right? Uh, Is that? Not being regulated? This uh, that would be difficult to see, yeah. but yeah, that, that would be included. That's what I was thinking. That, that, that would be included, that is a pesticide. Yeah. It may be difficult to see, but I mean, if, if a neighbor saw someone spraying a pesticide on the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also could be, yeah, yeah. It also could, yeah. be a, it could be approved as well, too, right? Mm -hmm. So we just say not, uh, is this the, is this the, I know there's a part in here that talks about ones that would be considered acceptable. And there's the problem you run into from the standpoint of a fine. Mm -hmm. you, know, you would have to prove that it is yeah. on a restricted list. Um, and how would, you, how would you determine whether it's just simply fertilizer, which I'm assuming isn't being regulated with no pesticides in it? No. Or they're putting halts down that has a herbicide. Herbicide, yeah. yeah. I suppose we could uh, ask ask the resident or the company what, what it was. Yeah, the company uh, would know. Uh, and 
Yeah, the company would be the easy one to find out. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. It'd be the resident, you know, the actual owner who's spreading himself. That'd mm -hmm. be a little trickier one yeah, to determine. I think we, we could take a sample of whatever the pellets were. But I think these questions sort of suggest that we, we should ease into this. That, mm -hmm. that educational campaign is, mm -hmm. I think, being said appropriately. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would be interested in what the other communities that have this, um, what their staffing level is. Uh, that, I, I'm not sure of that. Uh, I've got two calls into two different towns that I have not heard back from yet. Uh, I hope to, to speak with them about this. They have not returned my calls yet, and I haven't been able to get them on the phone when I call. Uh, but that is, that's what I'm trying to ascertain that. Yeah, that would be helpful. It, how they, you know, how they staff it, what they do, uh, uh, how they enforce, what kind of what kind of numbers are they finding from this? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, which, but they have not gotten back to me yet. And if, because we, Laura is really the only person generally in the office, um, so if a call were to come in and if Laura was out at a meeting or at a training or on vacation or what, would and it was somebody that wanted a response right away, who would, we don't have a bench, so would would the board be a place that we could call on to go out and do site visits, or? If, if, I, was, if I was available, I could go, sure. I could go take a look. Okay, that, that would be helpful, because um, it's, uh, we're thinly staffed, as you mm -hmm. know. You're speaking of the Board of Health. Board of Health, yeah. yeah, yeah, which the Board of Health does on occasion when we yeah. have things come up. You know, it's, it's been a good arrangement where I think you and Laura both have gone out sometimes and looked at things mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. and, um, but just in case if she's not in and something comes up mm -hmm. and the call comes to me, I could at least reach out. A little site visit, that's right. Mm. Great, thank you. So. Uh, John, I think my feelings would be, you know, the, um, the implementation of this has, al has always been the trickiest part of trying to get my, trying to get my head around. So, you know, if we, if we were to implement this in a, in, a, um, in a campaign fashion, I think it would be a much easier, smoother transition for people. And it's also a good awareness um, component to it as well. Mm -hmm. that, that certainly be something, we'll, you know, I don't know if we don't have to determine here tonight that we can come up with a um, viable solution where even if it, it's nothing that we're, we're not going to, we're not going out doing fines and site visits necessarily um, right away so much as we're doing a campaign about this is a new policy in place, um, even even some um, mailings that, that could go out. Yeah, and water bills. bills. Yeah, yeah. Um, th things of that nature say this is something that's coming, you know, start to get ready for it rather than just a quick let's, let's go get the ground running. The, Plastic band bag kind of um, yeah they have rings flyers rings around. true where they had you know there was that there's that period of time where okay you can still use these get rid of your stock it's coming mm -hmm. it's you know that type of campaign I thought was a smart idea in that, in that regard this probably would be would fall somewhere in this in a similar phase for me where people can get their head wrapped around a little bit so would you favor passing the regulations with a start date of say like a certain date in the future. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 as long as we're educating people that this that this regulation is going to be coming. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that to me makes more sense. I think um, certainly changing around the penalties for it, as far as. Um, what What are they now? Could you? It, right. Right now, it's uh, first offense is a fifty dollar fine, and second offense is a hundred. Yeah. So it'd be good to push those back to maybe a second, third offense, and have a warning as a first. Right. Yeah, I would um, go for that. That would that would be. I would agree with the warning. I think the board would be receptive to that. And then we, we definitely are going to have to, to come up with a, a plan, and maybe it doesn't have to be in the regulation, but we definitely have to, give, I think, come up with a plan before it really gets implemented of how you actually can enforce it. Because yeah. that's going to get a little tricky, I, I have a feeling. I don't know. I mean, maybe the instances, if you get a hold of like Marvel, then maybe they just haven't had as many instances as you might mm -hmm. assume. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it would be good to know those numbers. You know, how many instances have they have they seen reported? Because that I think ties in with what Gene was talking about, um, and could be tricky as far as proving, the mm -hmm. you know, to a final offense, um, which you, you know, 
I guess less than that would just be continuing warning uh, if you can't if you can't prove a finable offense. Now, would would you be willing to work on a on a plan uh, uh, of a like a public relations plan of how we can advertise this? Yeah, absolutely. I think that'd be a great uh, a great implementation because it ties into I think what the essence of this this draft really is, which is educational in nature mm -hmm. um, more than anything. Because um, again, you're not affecting to, to you know my point. You're not affecting a huge area, um, but you really want to start to set that to seed in the minds of people to affect their larger area that they have, you know, in the front and the back right. ones, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the end game to me, at least, would be part of this educational component would be to try to get to that end game where people say, yeah, maybe I, maybe I do want to use one of these alternatives that are listed here, yeah. you know. So I, I think that's. To me, a much better implementation for a policy like this because it has a better end result, um, and it, it's got a feel of you're working with the community now to say, "Hey, we're giving you this information. You know, this is going to be coming down the line as well, but here are some things that you may want to know about what's going on with uh, with the industry, what what we're looking for for um, uh, approved applications and non-approved applications, so they can make that benefit for themselves." That to me seems like a much better rollout. Yeah, there must be a lot of literature as far as uh, I'm not that familiar with the literature as far as safe, safe use of uh, pesticides or fertilizing pesticides. Safe use or safer alternatives? Well, either. Uh, well, but we have a safe use, right? I mean, that's what licensed contractors do. Well, yeah, but I'm talking as far as residential use, residents using it. Homeowners using it. Homeowners. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. If you're putting down halts, it just gives you, a, you know, such a spreader at this mm. level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get the right amount of But I mean, I, ideally, I mean, I, I don't use pesticides, but ideally yeah. it would be, you know, if people didn't, well, I live pretty much on the Ipswich River, so I, I didn't really think of using it, but ideally you wouldn't need them. The or Children's Protection Act had a lot of information that they, mm, okay. the state generated for schools because they prohibited right. the use of such okay. emergency situations okay. at schools. So clearly the state was looking at protecting children and, and providing alternatives and integrated pest management. Does that allow like the BT to be spread on things that killed mosquitoes in the early stages? I believe BT is a biological agent, so I, I don't think. I thought that was organic. Yes. Yeah, so that's okay. Yeah, they, that those are living organisms, aren't they? That yeah. Either. Right. It's well, a bacteria. Yes. A Celestrangensis. Okay. I'll throw some of that stuff at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. That. Uh, are, are we scheduled for the nineteenth uh, of June? Uh, mm -hmm, correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. We can bring that to the board. Uh, as far as the actual regulations, uh, do you want to work on? Can we can we come up with a something that we can present? Is this is when, when are we going to be meeting next? The no uh, we meet before the nineteenth. I don't think. I think the nineteenth was. Oh, okay. no, that's good. Yeah, okay. We really can't. Uh, do you want to meet? Can we meet the twelfth? Just to go over our final draft of what we've got here. I mean, I don't think we have a lot of changes. I don't think we have a lot of changes either. But I, I hate to change things on the yeah. It would be good yeah, to like like change them on the floor of town meeting. I hate right. to change them right here, right exactly. now, and have them final. But especially yeah. if you have any guidance on enforcement from uh, Marblehead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be good to get a couple more pieces of information to go mm -hmm. along with that. So, yeah, I, I certainly can make myself available on the twelfth. Are you talking about another board of health meeting? Yes, board of health meeting. So you meet twice well. in June. Uh, well, the June one we could we could keep for um, for the selectmen meeting only. The nineteenth we could meet. Oh, we could meet just from one. just from a quorum standpoint um, at, oh, at the selectmen meeting. Yeah. Uh -huh. Heidi will be on your team until the end of June. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. It also would be good to have a full complement of the board. Uh, just while let you guys know, uh, I did reach out to Emmy Dove to see. She was still interested. I think mm -hmm. she still is. So okay, we will be doing the appointments soon. I expect her Great. to apply. Great. Uh, could she be an associate if she? I suggested that. Okay. Those are immediate and available. Perfect. It's amazing how many associate positions are available. Oh, yeah. We finally did the math on it. I mean, board of seven, very trustees has four. 
go figure, but that's how the math works out. It it's, up, it's up to two thirds of the membership. Yeah, wow. you actually have two. So. Uh, there is another meeting on June twelfth that I'm possibly going to need to be at. I'm not still not sure. So, what time? Well, I, I, it shouldn't be a long. All I'd like to do is just finalize what are probably change the change the wording on the fines. Uh, and actually, later the later the better for Heidi. It's not going to be a long meeting. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. it was a six or six there, it's a lot easier for her to get to. Yeah. And and work with an effective date that we can present that we would like to present to to an effective date for when we want it to take effect. Okay. We can have a brief discussion about implementation. So, right. about maybe by then, hopefully, we have an idea of what other communities um, have seen from their rollout uh, of the policy. That's May twelfth. You said. So the 12th, the 19th? June 12th. June 12th. So the, um, I think if, if, we do, if we do this on the 12th, we can probably not have one for the 19th, unless there's something, right, we may unless, the, the unless there's a report that you're going to need. Well, then just uh, you, you should come. Uh, so it would be. Only one? Because yeah. you, have, you have a quorum you should post. Okay. We can just post it in case a quorum shows up. You can yeah. do that. Yeah, you could do yeah. that. Time up for the 19th, yeah, yeah. The 19th. At the which you wouldn't need to be at. Yeah. We may not even have to meet beforehand mm -hmm. if we if we if we have it on the 12th, right? Yeah, you could always post, you could always post this at like 6 30 mm -hmm. on the 19th, just mm -hmm. in case we needed to meet real quick beforehand. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, like I said, I think there's only a couple, couple of things we want to really change. Uh, fine and a date. Unless there was anything else that you thought, Kevin, to change, but I, we've, we've been well, through a lot of this. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear the implementation part of it, you know, how, on, on other communities. Mm -hmm. um, just just in the off chance of something that we're, we're missing here um, without, without having that okay. knowledge. We can do that on the 12th. Good. What is your... Uh, the idea of the DPWs and for are they involved in the process here or something? They were supportive of it originally. But oh, they're not they're actually part of the enforcement. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. No, they were just supportive of it uh, originally. Nancy had spoken to them and they were yeah. they were supportive. Right. They already uh, pretty much obeyed themselves. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. So to be clear, the board's gonna meet every we're all gonna meet on the twelfth and do our regular meeting uh, on the twelfth at six thirty or uh, yeah, uh, Heidi has a problem. I, will, I don't think I'm going to be able to attend that one because okay. the other meeting is okay. at 7. I, if it were at 5.30, I might be able to squeeze it in. Yep. I don't know. But, but, you mean, unless there's other, other things. I mean, I, I am working on the immunization sort of pro, pro, uh, process. That, uh, that I'm hoping to have some sort of a program or outlined. Uh, in the near future, uh, I mean, we can we can hold off on that and pretty much just discuss this on okay. the twelfth. So you're anticipating having this for the board of selectmen in their packets, right? Yes. Which means that we would need it the right. next day. You need it the next right. day. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Packets generally go out Thursday. first thing Thursday morning. Right. No, so later in the afternoon. But they could put to bed. Yeah, I try not to avoid that last minute. Um, <laughs> find out what, I, I guess we could just find out what, what's the easiest for Heidi on the 12th. I know sometimes when we change up our schedule, it, it, she has conflictions, so mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to find out from her if that's going to work as well, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, we, can, we can talk about that in okay. the email, too. Yeah. Okay. So for right mm -hmm. now, it's June 12th, Board of Health meeting. At Tentatively scheduled yeah. time. Time to it's be six, determined yeah. for 6.30? Yeah. 6 or 6.30. Okay. We'll have to do staff coverage because we need someone to do the minutes. Okay. So that gets us into scheduling. And then um, you're saying on June 19th you posted another meeting at 6.30 before the select board meets? Yes, uh, we'll we sh we'll probably know if we need that after our meeting on the twelfth. Okay. We, yeah. Well, we'll we'll 
for now, we'll assume that that's going to be okay. the, the case, yeah. and we'll need to post that so we remember to post it. Right. So we will be posting for the Board of Health on the 19th at 6.30. And then again, will you, will you just continue that to the selectmen, or will you? Uh, we could do that. We could continue. Uh, if you'd be posted once for the two. Mm -hmm. Oh, we could just keep it in session. Uh, yeah, just keep it in session. Them, yeah. Allow the Board of Selectmen to know that we are in session. You're in session. Okay. Is that appropriate? Uh, yeah, sure. You just need to, you'll be meeting here, you'll need to leave a sign as to where to go, <laughs> where you went. Regular food, food inspections, routine inspections, complaints, um, everything's going the same. We just met three weeks ago, but um, I did send out that package for Lincoln and Prescott. Do you have anything you want to add on that? Uh, I didn't. There was, I, I looked at some of the figures, uh, but that's a lot of data. There's a lot of data. Yeah. Yeah. What's the bottom line? Problem or not? Up to John. I, 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 is everyone I spoke with the DEP, they're, they're conforming. Uh, okay. They are under in compliance. Uh, some of the, uh, there was one, uh, the results of the, uh, the samples, I don't know if, if that's an, on, are they ongoing sampling when they, when they remove some of the uh, material that's there? I imagine that that's an ongoing sampling. As long as they're su supplying that sampling to us, that's, that's fine. And the, I guess the DP, DEP did uh, speak with them about risk reduction measures, which it looks like they're either implementing it or they're, they're already doing whatever, uh, whatever the DEP had recommended, as far as I can tell. Uh, we're not privy to what the DEP had, had recommended to them, uh, but it looks like their professional is is taking care of whatever they they do. So he's not always necessarily on site, but he's on call if he needs to be there. I, I believe so. I don't. He's not always there. I don't think, but he's he supervises whatever activities if go on. There. Anything he move and he has to observe. He's there. I don't. I don't know if he has to. Does he? Well, that's kind of what we're out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he has to be actually be there, but I'm sure he has to. Take account of all the testing that gets done and okay. what actually what the plan is that they that they do. Uh, anything else, Laura? That, no, no problems. No. 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 All right. Uh, and the minutes from April the twenty fourth. Yep. <coughs> I had no changes. Uh, I did not have any. any uh, should I just suggest? I'm not really a member, so you don't have to list, list me as not present. But <laughs> knock yourself out if you really want. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? Uh, motion to accept the minutes of April twenty fourth, two thousand eighteen. I will second the motion. All in favor? Uh, two zero. Uh, minutes approved from April twenty fourth. Uh, anything else? Nothing. On the agenda? No, nothing on the agenda. No. Uh, nothing popped up in the last twenty four hours. No. Forty eight hours. Maybe in the last hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. No. Really. Um, a motion to adjourn. Seeing right. nothing else. Motion, uh, motion uh, to adjourn. Aye, aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you much.